Hi guys, Di from Posh Up Cycle here. Um, another little project out of um, storage. So we're in lockdown still and this is probably the last piece I've got before we come out. So we've got a hutch and we got the buffet. So I've already started with the doors. We've taken all the hardware off there, hinges, um, handles, same with the drawers. And we're now going to completely strip the top and we're going to scuff sand the rest of it and we're going to start painting it maybe white and maybe the top uh, a walnut or a lime wash we haven't decided yet we'll see what the top comes out when it's all sanded back and we'll take it from there so keep watching you asked to see me painting a little bit more so here we go so I have a 25 millimeter sleek brush um, I don't use brushes and um, I just use it for cutting in so we just put a little bit of paint on there and I just cut in the edge here uh, this edge has got a lip on it so I'm going on the lip too Get as least paint on the brush as possible because if you get too much, this is where you get the runs. And then I just dab it, and what I'm doing is I'm just dabbing it and I'm dipping it back onto the roller. And then I do the creases, so we've got the lip on the skirting, we've got a lip under the skirting, I'm just going to cut in there. We've got the lip on the, another part of the skirting. You just want to get in all those cracks just so you get a nice even coverage. And same with the corner. I'll go around with a brush on the corner. Just get in those cracks if there's any, which I've already filled. But we do want it looking nice. All right, then I'll take my brush and I'll just put it on the side. Always the same side to the right the bristles to the right and then you don't get any paint on here and you don't get covered I always get covered so I don't know why I say that I do get covered I'm a little bit messy but I'm a bit of a perfectionist too so then we take the roller and we just roll about here to get most of it off the roller so now most of it is on there the roller's got this on so now we'll go up to the top and the reason I do that is to try and not get more paint up here because that is definitely where you get most of your arms. And then I just come over here again, get rid of any brush marks. And just on the side. And I'll just have a check. Yeah, that's looking good. And we do get a little speck coming out from the wind. Take it off, that's how good all marks on my pens. And then we work down. underneath here as well so I'm going to do the same underneath and the same 
on that ball there. Now I've probably done it a little bit slower than I normally do because I've just been trying to explain. So I'm going to push that to the side and I'll do the same process through the, the front and through the inside. So to do one coat on here will probably take me 35 to 45 minutes um, and when I do white, as we say, we do four coats of prep and we do two top coats. So this is British Paints Enamel Semi White Aqua Enamel and I do two coats. One coat, I do normally get the coverage, um, so because I'm, I'm, I've been doing it a while. Um, but again, you know, you you open the, the garage doors the next day and you inspect it in the light, and sometimes you will see the odd bit that you've missed. So I don't take any chances. I always do two top coat, and then you've just covered everything. So I'm just going to move that round here. Get my little mechanics chair, and then I'm going to start on this side. I'll catch you soon. Hi all, we're painting a door now, um, same process whether it's the prep or whether it's the enamel. So we're on British Paints Enamel now. This has had the um, four coats in the Torbmans. Um, so what we need to do is just make sure there's no um, little bits. So again, we go around, give it a sound. Very smooth this. So it should come out nice. Right, so first tip in this video. I always put a tip in my videos. All these doors came off. So this is B2. So that means that it's on the bottom and it's the second door. So what I then do is, um, so B1, B2, B3, B4. So the four doors are listed. This is the bottom. And this sits right on the bottom of the buffet. So nobody is ever gonna see the bottom of that door. Never, ever. So never paint the bottom if you don't need to. And the reason for that is, is that when you go to put it back on the unit, the first thing that's gonna scuff is the bottom of the painted unit because you don't need to, you don't need to paint the bottom. So that extra couple of millimeters saves you from painting. And as you can see, I've got bits of paint on there. So I will be doing this before we go back on and taking any paint off the bottom. That's what I always do, just rough sandpaper and I'll, I'll go around the bottom so that when it opens and shuts, it doesn't scuff the bottom. Never paint the bottom. Always mark them, B1, B2, B3, B4. Four door on the bottom. And what I also do is I start with the first door and I, I'll label the hinges. So it would be hinge one, hinge two, the next door, hinge three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's four doors, eight hinges. So I always know that the, the first hinge goes on the top, the second on the bottom. So all the uneven numbers on the top and all the even numbers on the bottom. So that's my tip for getting the hinges back on the same doors. And always label the bottom. Never paint the bottom. So this is how I paint. So I've got my sleek brush, which is 25 millimeter. Again, I don't know if you can see, but I just dab it in the paint and then I take it off onto the roller. So there's minimum paint on there. And then I go in every crack and crevice. Now on here, there's quite a few, so I'll go in there as well. Every crack and crevice, get in there with the enamel, so, and it, it's going to take two coats, so, let's just get in there and get round. Quite windy out there today, we've got a mixture of everything today in Melbourne, it's, um, oh, it's 13 degrees at the moment, we've got wind, we've just had a really bad rainstorm, 
I've got absolutely soaking bringing the washing back in and now we've got we've got a bit of sun so I've just checked the clouds out there there is no clouds so I've just took the drawers which I've been painting and I put them outside in the sun just to dry quicker and harden and cure in the sun so hopefully it doesn't rain but I'm going to keep popping out and checking that there's no clouds if it won't rain and hopefully they'll get about an hour in the sunshine which will help the process I always keep the base of the door facing me, that way I know I don't have to paint that side. So I'm just getting around the frame still. Lovely doors these, they've got lovely, um, I don't know, architrave around the doors. There's a lot of thought gone into this one. The base has got a load of um, thick pocket um, skirt around the bottom. Oh, it's going to look lovely when it's finished. And I've got the hutch over there, so because of Covid, um, I've got customers items in here, I haven't got much space, I've got a buffet there, I've got the bedsides here, TV unit and the hutch that's finished behind, so I've got no space, um, nobody can pick up, nobody can drop off, bye bye rules, so I'll just get stuff out of storage, so what I need to do is, now this is the last piece, I've got hubby picking up couple of pieces when um, we're out of lockdown and then that goes in the storage because I paint for my sanity you know it's just it's nice it's calming so now what I'm doing is a roller so I go everywhere with a roller I do the inside panel first and then I go around the sides like this nice little quick movements There's not a lot of paint on this roller, but there's enough to cover it. You don't want loads of paint. You've got loads of paint on, that's where you get really uneven surfaces and you can sort of see there's too much texture there. And you always get the other bit of dust coming out. Just get it out. So I'm covering the paint. So these are gonna look quite nice. So around the outside. That's the front done now. I'm just going to paint the sides here. There's a little catch on the side. Just get the brush and go around the catch carefully. It's going to get paint on it, but that's okay. I'm going to scrape that off when I've finished. It'll be a nice finish. I can't take those catches off. I always take all the off. This is like one of those little bowl things that goes in and out as it catches in the cabinet. I don't want to risk trying to get it off in case I break it because I haven't saw those in Buddins to buy. I would take it off if I had some space, but I lost no space. But I'll make sure it's nice when it's finished. I'll screw it off there. So now I'll do the side, but then I'll look back on the top and just go over there again. And again, with the sides, um, you've got to be careful because if you put too much paint on, you're not going to get them back in the same way. It's, it's not going to... It's not going to shut. You've just added millimetres to each side, say two mil each, two mil or a mil each side, and you've only got a tiny little gap. So what I do is, where I paint, I go in with a sander and I take as much as I can off. So I'll take all of the, the varnish or paint or whatever's on there, and go right back to raw wood, and therefore I've still got enough millimetre to get the cabinet in. And sometimes when you paint with a draw, Where's the bottom? I can hold the bottom and the back. So there you go. There's no marks on there, just have a quick check, but I do need to get in with the hand that's going. Um, so what you've got to be careful as well is when you put them back, you want them to look perfect as well. And what I also do is I'm going to put this in the sun there just outside um, because I haven't painted the bottom which I never I can then put my hand on the bottom and I can hold from underneath so that when I go outside I'm just going to literally put it on the ground like that and have it leaning up against the shed wall so that's one more done three more to go how are you doing we're still working on this buffet hutch 
and we've had four quarts of Tobin's 3 one prep and um, I keep getting asked to put the products in, I keep forgetting, my fault. So we're using Tobin's 3 one prep and um, we're doing this white now so we put four quarts on it and we know it's looking good when it's got that um, depth to it. So there's nice depth to it now. So now that it's dry, it's dried overnight, um, I always let it dry overnight when I put the fourth coat on. So now what I'm going to do is I've got 400 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to smooth up all the edges. I'm going to go inside here and just smooth all the edges here and then smooth the drawers inside here. And that way we get a really nice smooth finish when we put the enamel on. So it takes off any little lumps, bumps, and it sounds a bit like chalk paint. It does. It gives you a really good base to work with. And I like using it because you get no bleed through. And I've got enamel paint to use because I go through that quite a bit and it's always on hand. So I'll be putting enamel on two coats. So I've just done that. This is an old cloth that's stained and I'm just going to wipe it all off. So what I do now is when I use the paintbrush, people have been asking, I go in all the cracks and crevices and I'll just do a little bit and then I'm going to do the top, turn it the other way because it's easier. Now make sure I get in all these, these little cracks and crevices at the sides. Do two coats to make sure I get everything and make sure you don't leave a lot of paint in these corners. Just push it out. Then I take the roller and I make sure there's not a lot of paint on there, so I keep rolling the paint off and I just dab it and roll, roll it back in. So, what I do, just so you can see, is I just roll up and down here and I get the middle one, but then come up the sides here so everything's rolled and there's no brush marks so you don't get any brush marks and you'd be surprised when you're doing large pieces how quick this is I mean some people might use the paintbrush that's great you might use the paintbrush go for it but a roller no brush marks ever I mean, don't get me wrong you'll still get runs if the paint's not right and you're not careful So then what I do, so I always do it upright, so I'm just going to have a check there to make sure there's no imperfections. So once I've got the middle sorted, I then go around the sides, the top, and then we do these bits. the drill that's the first coat done so then we're gonna leave it for a couple hours then I'll come back and do I'll do another coat then I'll take the tape off so as you can see inside we've already done some stenciling there was a lot of um, ink and crayon marks in there um, and pencil marks so I've gone and sanded everything out and I I'll, I'll put this on to try and I think that's it's done a good job it's you can't really see the, um, the marks now, it sort of distracted you from it. So once this is dry, I take the tape off. I'm gonna just lightly sand all of this to freshen it up and clean it. And then we're going to do some stenciling on the sides. Because it's got a runner, it means that these sides are not touching anyway. So when it's got runners or a recess like this, I like to stencil the sides as well. So that's the next video, so we'll catch you soon. Hi guys, we're back, nice and dry. Let's now go take the tape off. Let's hope it's all done its job. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> that 
Okay, so I'm going to be stenciling here. So this is 400 grit. So I'm going to get a bit Same on the other side. Right, so I've been having a look at stencils and I think I'm going to use this one because I can put it on here and I can just about get it on. the border and obviously the middle section <clears throat> won't have anything so I've got this <clears throat> cloth down because the drawers are just freshly painted so all I do is I put it on get it centered where I want it that's nice and paint I'm going to take the paint and just put a little bit on there get my sponge and I'll just add the paint back up. Not too much. So that should be enough on there. And just, that's probably too much. Just dab it again on there. So I normally just hold this still. And I just dab lightly. So I'm just dabbing very lightly. Because it's a stencil, it's a side. It's just to add extra detail. Make it look a little bit more gorgeous. And don't worry about it not being perfect. Stencils never are perfect. So off we go. Okay. I have four drawers to do. This is the first one. So I normally try it, and if I like it, okay, great, I go on. If I don't like this, then I'll just. I'll wipe it off and start again with something else. So that's one. It doesn't look too bad. Let's do another one. Let's move them down all the way. Just try and get a little bit of paint, a bit more paint. Just hold this. So I'm just trying to hold it, not on this where I've previously stenciled, just down here. Start it off, and then it should pull down itself. Once you get a bit of paint on there, careful around the edges. cloth just down here. So now I'm just going to wipe my, my hands on this cloth and let's see how that looks like. And I think it looks, looks okay. So that's the side of the drawer. And I'm using Tobin's 3 mod prep. It's just a prep paint and obviously 3 in 1 tends to stick better and won't come off. So you'll be able to scrape that in an hour's time and it won't go anywhere. So yeah, quite pleased with that. And because this is freshly painted, that's why I put a, a cloth down. So all I do now is I just, well I can't do it now, there's no way this room is So I've got to wait while that side dries before I do the other side, otherwise it'll smudge. So I'll go and get some more drawers and we'll finish all them off. Catch you soon. Hi guys, back again. Um, this is the top, so 
I want to try and finish it off. Um, this is what we've used so far. I've just done, it's all bad inside, so I've decanted it into a glass bottle. So this is mini wax, poly shades, stain and polyurethane, one step, royal walnut. It is a, wall, it is a one step, but um, I've used it before and I found it's very streaky. So I'll put it on with a cloth on this and I only wanted one coat. The reason I wanted one coat is because I wanted to try and get like a nice walnut color because I didn't want to sand all of the drawers and change them. And I've actually done some stenciling as you know. And um, so what I wanted to do was try and blend the color in. So I'm just gonna push some drawers in properly now because we're gonna start doing this. So I got um, about 600 grit, 600 grit paper, and I just want to give it a, a good sand. Maybe it'll take some of the stain off. I'm not bothered if it does. I just want it nice and smooth. for the first time the fusion clear tough coat mat and on this one on the website it says that you can use it on light colors so not very good for dark colors and yeah I've had to do a dark color for a customer before and she wanted matte on yeah doesn't matter what mat you use on dark colors sometimes you just don't get the finish you like but the customer wants what the customer gets. And we told her it wouldn't give a good match, but a good look. But it did come out all right. So how it says to apply this is a sponge. A sponge in the stencil. and wipe. I don't shake it and get air bubbles. And I know that because the other mat, I'll not mention the brand I tried, 
did have that as well, so you just literally got to turn this over slowly so you don't get air bubbles in it. I was doing this the other day, so it's, it's fairly mixed and it hasn't had a lot of time to settle. So I think we'll go for it. These are just the Samba barbecue gloves. And these are absolutely great. <laughs> Samba. Disposable. Um, they don't say they're chemical or paint resistant or anything. Nothing comes through these gloves. Varnish, stain, and it doesn't matter how long you wear them for, they're pretty good. And they're much better than the, the ones you get in the shops. That say they're not trial and chemical resistant. So what, what it says is we just pour this on and it's got a soak in the sponge. Here we go, let's try and get it in into my fingers. Needs to be done. Okay, and we're ready to go. So why don't we just put it on the sponge? And apparently there's not much time. use a cloth when I do this. So I've used a sponge to come out okay. Glance down to make sure I've caught everywhere. It's drying quick. Very quick. Just got a bit more of my effect here. It says there's not much time to work with it. Yeah. It's drying a bit alright. Mm, so it says two coats, so we'll come back and give that a second coat. Hi guys, back again. Um, we're on the clutch part now and I've taken the doors off and they've got panels of glass in there. I have taped both sides. So if we look, it's got the beading on. I just wasn't able to take all the beading off, take the glass out. Then you've got to paint the beading. So I've just taped it. So what I'm gonna show you is one door hard way off and we've taped it. So we've taped it both sides. So we've taped it both sides. Just before I paint, I'll go and make sure that the edges are stuck down properly. And I've just got them lined up. And I'm on the next one here. So I haven't done this one yet. But I just wanted to show you, we've done the same again. So this is, um, this is door number two. Excuse me, so I'm just going to put on the bottom B2, B2, 
and I've labelled all the hinges so again this being B2 this will be hinge 3 and 4 so hinge 3 at the top 4 at the bottom um, but what I wanted to show you is on all these doors you've got these little plastic things and so this is when the door shuts it, the wood doesn't slam you've got a little soft buffer now once this is painted I won't know exactly where that goes it's hit and miss so all I'm going to do I'm just going to put a tiny little hole one millimetre into the wood and once that's painted I'll be able to put some of those little soft closers back on in exactly the same places because they're on the the tall door as well see one two so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scuff sand all of that I'm going to clean it with methylated spirits I'm going to let it dry and then we'll do the Taubman's 3-in-1 prep four coats we'll catch you soon Here we are and we are ready to put the hinges back on the other doors next video i'm going to show you how i take the tape off which is easier for me and how i get some nice clean edges anyway here are the hinges and the only part that you see is that little bit there so i've just sprayed spray that and just one coat and i have used rust-oleum two times ultra cover paint and primer it's in black it bonds to anything and it's only something like eight dollars a can and that will probably last me a full year so it's easy to do so i'll catch you on the next video we're going to be showing you how to take take all the tape off and get a nice neat edge hi guys hope you can see me here so we've got the door and now we're going to take this um frog tape off and the reason I use the frog tape is because this glass will not come out. It's actually nailed in at the other side and I didn't want to take all of the, the frame out on the inside. It was easier just to use frog tape. Now what I found is when you take it out, people tend to pull away this way, away from the paint. Doesn't always work. I find you get it better if you just pull it towards the paint and just go slowly. And don't ask me why, but, and then I just get my finger, I just go in there, take off the excess, and then we get a little cloth. There's my fingernail. And then if there's just like a little lump or anything, I just use, I just use a Stanley blade, very gently. Well, as you can see, we're starting to get a very neat, neat edge there. And just a little slammy blade goes in. So look at that. How neat is that? And also, because I've gone over the frog tape, I've got little dints. So this is a very blunt knife. It's been with me decorating for about 20 years. So that's how blunt it is. And I'll just lightly scrape over the little dots, get them off very gently and get your old rag and just go over again. So there we have it, nice neat edge. So we'll pull the tape towards you very slowly. Oh, this one's going well. If it doesn't work, then what I'll do is I'll take the Stanley blade and I'll actually go in, because I have had it before where I can't pull the tape off, and I've actually gone in and I've scored a line, and then I've pulled the tape off, but this seems to be going all right without scoring, so I'll just get my fingernail and I'll just go in there like that, but I'll just go in the Stanley blade gently. Get a nice smooth edge. There we go, get the warm little lumps off.
So there we have it, nice neat edge. So I've got four doors to do. Four doors and two sides on each. Now do you see this one, there's a big lump come off. I don't know if you can see. Let me just take the camera over. Where am I going? I'm going here. Yep, I'll bring you up. There. So just here, the tape hasn't fitted very well. So I've just got the Stanley blade and I'm just gonna go down there very lightly. And then I turn the Stanley blade to the non-blunt end that way. And I'll just go up there and take it off. See, gone. And there's nothing, there's nothing there. See, it's like nice, neat, tidy. Let me zoom you in. What I also do is I also clean the glass just after I've finished and both sides. And then I actually take it inside and you'll be surprised what you see once you take it inside. And I clean it again. Now also, if I go through here, so if I go through here and I find that there's a little bit chipped or anything, I just get the enamel brush that I'm using and I actually go in again, just very gently. And then I get a damp cloth and just wipe lightly and you'll see it will be covered. So very easy to touch things up, but I'll also touch things up once it's on the cabinet as well. I'll do a third check on it. So hope that helps, hope that's some good tips for you and catch you on the next video. Thank you.